you will hear from Peter Staley, who asked me to introduce him as a member of ACT UP New York. After him having been diagnosed with AIDS-related complex in 1985, he left a trading position on Wall Street to work full-time as an AIDS activist. He's best known, welcome, Peter. He is best known for leading ACT UP's fight against Burroughs Welcome in 1989 over the high cost of AZT. In September of last year, In September of last year, Peter led a shutdown of the New York Stock Exchange. Three days later, the price of AZT was lowered. I recognize that representatives of Burroughs Welcome may take issue with the causality between these discrete but contiguous events. But here we all are this week, the drug suppliers, the international distributors, the clinical trial investigators, the government regulators, and now the consumers. Hey, can we talk? In an effort to bridge the gap that now seems to exist between AIDS activists and you, members of the medical and scientific communities, I would like you to join us in an act of activism. Trust me, you'll enjoy this. Standing up for a political value you believe in and vocalizing your commitment is very empowering. But first, I would like to be joined in front of this stage by my fellow AIDS activists. Would you all come up? At this moment, there are others just like us who are trying to get into this conference but are being barred by the billy clubs of San Francisco police. 375 is not enough. And there are still others like us who are trying to get through customs at the San Francisco airport but are being detained instead because they are gay. And these same custom agents are under orders to keep a lookout for AZT in people's luggage. If you're found with any, you're put on the next plane out of the country. There is a man that could have prevented these absurdities. This man has said that he would like to see a kinder, gentler nation. This man has said that he's appalled at the discrimination that people living with HIV disease face in this nation. Meanwhile, an agency which the same man is supposedly in charge of is blatantly practicing just such discrimination. I am, of course, referring to the Immigration and Naturalization Service, the INS. It's hard to fathom the industrialized nation with the highest incidence of HIV infection among its people attempts to bar HIV at its borders. There is a man that could end this insanity with the stroke of a pen, but he won't. He believes that this INS policy will stem the spread of HIV, along with federally funded educational campaigns that read as though they've been written by Cardinal O'Connor and withholding any funds from needle exchange or even bleach distribution programs. I ask all of you now, you were asked to stand earlier in silence. We're going to do something different. We're going to stand ACT UP style. If you believe that the present INS policy barring people with li living with HIV disease from entering this country is useless as a health policy and discriminatory as well, please stand now and remain standing.
All right. Now, hold up. All right. Okay. Now I'd like to ask you to join us in vocal vocalizing our collective anger. Join us in a chant against the man who could bring down the INS barriers. Join us in a chant against the man who has decided to show his commitment to fighting AIDS by refusing to be here today. Instead, he is at this very moment in North Carolina attending a fundraiser for the homophobic author of the INS barriers, that pig in the Senate known as Jesse Helms, Join us in this chant, 300,000 dead from AIDS, where is George? 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 Shame, 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 shame. Thank you. You can sit down. You can all now consider yourselves members of ACT UP. Exactly 30 days ago, all of us here in front stood up for what we believed in and vocalized our commitment on the beautiful grounds of the National Institutes of Health. President Bush, were you told why we were there? In the simplest terms, we stormed the NIH based on the strongly held belief that the AIDS Clinical Trials Group, the government's AIDS research effort, is a bureaucracy in serious trouble. Item. Of the 9,200 patients enrolled in the ACTG studies thus far, over 60% were in trials looking at AZT alone or against a placebo. During the upcoming days, ACT UP New York will be handing out our AIDS treatment agenda, which includes a list of 99 drugs that we believe could be ready for small phase one studies this year or next. For the cost of ACTG's two major AZT studies, 016 and 019, approximately half this list could be funded for human trials. Since Burroughs Welcome has sold close to $1 billion worth of AZT, I ask you, President Bush, why weren't they running the trials on AZT, and why was the ACTG neglecting to run phase one studies on new drugs? Item. A study released this week exposed the NIH's history of discrimination against women and minorities when recruiting for trials. The ACTG could write the book on mismatching demographics of its trials with the demographics of AIDS. For example, while 37% of people with AIDS are black, the percentage of blacks in ACTG trials has only been a low 10%. I ask you, President Bush, is your war against AIDS for white men only? <laughs> Item. Since 1985, seven drugs have either been approved for sale or released on treatment IND for AIDS-related conditions. AZT, alpha interferon, aerosolized pentamidine, DHPG, EPO, DDI, and fluconazole. Only one of these, fluconazole, was released based in part on data obtained by the ACTG. I ask you, President Bush, do you call this a good record? I think it stinks. I fear that the Reagan-Bush legacy on AIDS will be the deaths of over one million Americans. President Bush, how can you say that this nation is on a wartime footing against AIDS when you, like your predecessor, have refused to put anyone in charge of this war. President Bush, how can you say you're against discrimination towards people with AIDS 
when you restrict their right to travel and immigrate. President Bush, how can you say you want a kinder and gentler nation when you publicly oppose the AIDS disaster relief bill? President Bush, how can you say you care at all about AIDS when instead of joining us here today, you're in North Carolina at a fundraiser for Jesse Helms? <laughs> President Bush, we're watching your actions, not your words. Your actions are killing us. Your words are lies. I understand that I'm supposed to give a personal perspective on living with HIV. As you can tell from this speech thus far, I have never been able to view my situation as just a battle between me and HIV. I have always been painfully aware that in order for me to beat this virus and live, I will need a great deal of help from all of you, as well as from my government. Cooper cooperation between all of us is the fastest way to a cure. However, recently I've begun to lose hope in our ability to work together to end this crisis. If anything, the gap that exists between all of you and AIDS activists seems to be widening. From your side, we're being constantly told to butt out. In a meeting I went to last week with other members of ACT UP New York's Treatment and Data Committee and NIAID's top brass, Dan Hoth, the director of the ACTG, told us that our participation at ACTG meetings as observers only could possibly scare the pharmaceutical companies away and bring the whole system crashing down. Robert Gallo has said publicly that many of his fellow AIDS researchers are talking of leaving the field due to the antics of AIDS activists. On my side, the level of anger and frustration is reaching such a point that attitudes claiming that all of you are uncaring and in it for greed are now widespread. I'm being taught to hate the Gang of Five Doctors Corey, Merrigan, Fischel, Hirsch, and Richmond, without ever having met any of them. Gay people and straight people, black people and white people, men and women, who will hear the story that once there was a terrible disease and that a brave group of people stood up and fought and in some cases died so that others might live and be free. Like the unsung anonymous doctors who are fighting this disease, and are so busy putting out fires that they don't have time to strategize, AIDS activists are stretched to the limit of their time and energy, putting out fires of bigotry and hatred and misinformation when they need to be fighting for drugs and research money. We need luxury time to strategize the next year of this battle, and we need our friends to join us so we can buy that time. And after we kick the shit out of this disease, I intend to be alive to kick the shit out of the system so that this will never happen again. Thank you. But the main emotion that's driven me is fear. I'm really very, very scared uh, about dying. And personally, and uh, I just don't, I, I'm pretty conservative about my estimates of, of how long I've got. I look at all the studies, and I see the timeline I've got in front of me, and then I look at the federal AIDS research effort and the private AIDS research effort, and what drugs are in the pipeline, and how long it takes them to get through, and things don't converge in time for me.